Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Here's one of the, uh, the reels that we previewed. This one came in from Robert. And Robert is out in California. And uh, Robert has done a beautiful job cleaning up some pieces and parts uh, for a, an older Pen 114H, the 60. And uh, a lot of people were asking me sometimes uh, about the, uh, the reels with the the marlin or the sailfish coming out of the uh, side plate. Those uh, tend to be the older reels. And uh, there's a lot of uh, collectors out there that are looking for the etched side plates. And this is one of the ones that's, uh, that's kind of sought after in the, uh, in the Senator series. So I just uh, previewed a reel uh, a while ago. I had the trolling boat scene on it. It was a, uh, a Pen uh, 49, same, same kind of era. Well, this one, I don't know where it's been, but it hasn't been fishing, or if it's been fishing, it's been very well taken care of. This is an older reel, you can tell because of the crossbars versus the, uh, the solid uh, uh, side-mounted plates. This one is a old, very old reel because it has the interchangeable discs that come from the outside, as opposed to having to take the, um, the side plate off to change or service the drag washers. You can do that with the side plate installed by pulling out those gears from here. So, looks like uh, I've got a bag of parts. I'll start by kind of putting those into a parts tray there. I'm gonna trust that what he's telling me is correct. Uh, we've got the old style asbestos uh, gear washers. Looks like everything at first glance is here. So we'll just uh, have some fun putting this one back together and showing you a little bit about the reel as we do that. So let's go ahead and take the side plate off. And Somebody asked me, uh, what do I think about parts in a bag, uh, real projects? I, I don't mind them. Uh, I, I certainly congratulate the folks that have done the, the initial work. I think that um, you should try to service your own reels if, if you have that in you. Uh, it's kind of a fun hobby, and it's certainly something that you can learn from. And uh, maybe you learn that uh, you need to take pictures along the way. Uh, maybe you learned that, uh, uh, that there's something that you've overlooked. Whatever it is, it's a kind of a learning experience. And uh, so go ahead and do it. If you're uh, encouraged to do it, go ahead and do it. It's, uh, it's not wiring a house with uh, a live wire on a, uh, on a 220 uh, amp service or something like that. We're going to get electrocuted. Uh, and it's not embarrassing at all to say, hey, I need a hand here, right? I do it all the time. All right, I'm going to oil that burring in the back. That's what I do with burrings. We've got a, uh, a very clean thing. We don't need to do anything there. Robert's taking care of all of that. He's taking care of the, um, the internals. He did a beautiful job in terms of cleaning this up. So let's just help him out by, uh, by showing you how to put the rest of this reel together. All right, I'm not sure. It seems like this has been serviced. So if it hasn't been serviced, what you want to do is you want to grab a, a pin and you want to knock this uh, hold down pin out of that gear sleeve. I'm just looking for my, my hammer here. There's a little pin here. Let's see if I can't get that out. Now if this is off camera I'm going to apologize. So you knock it out. It comes like that. Now you can pull that gear sleeve up and it doesn't look like this was taken off before so it's a good thing that we remove that. There is some residual dirt and grease under here, so you want to clear that out. Now, if it's really stubborn, go ahead and use a scrubby pad. Go ahead and use something like a steel wall and the like. But make sure you get that cleaned as you uh, uh, as you go to service your reel. All right, I'm going to use grease now. I'm going to use Pen Precision Reel Grease. I'm going to grease that shaft up. That's part of the service. This is the groove that that pin rides in, like that. That holds the sleeve on. Now we simply reverse the process. That goes on. And you can either tap that in, sometimes you can. This is a soft flow hammer, so it's not going to dent the, the, uh, the pin or anything. Sometimes you can use a, a little pliers like I'm using here to pull it in. Very good. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to look for the hard washer. That goes next. We take our, our main gear stack. 
So you do need to get it out. You don't need to, to grease them or anything. It's like a brake line kind of material. There is a conversion kit if you wanted to, to make that uh, into the HT100s, but you don't need to. If they've been acceptable to you and working well, just make sure they're clean. That's all that needs to be done with these. All right, I've cleaned the inside of the channel here. I'm going to put this on before I go ahead and um, That's that little pin I was talking about. It was just tight enough. Okay, we've got that on. Now I'm going to check the teeth on the main gear. These are beautiful main gears. They're stainless cuts. These things will last a lifetime. Robert did a nice job of cleaning it. We'll do a nice job of, of greasing it up then. So use something like this pen fishing reel grease. Use a, use a fishing reel grease. I really don't care which one you use. Uh, I don't see much difference in them. Some folks will tell me that one's better than the other. And uh, I think some of that is probably true. And some of it is probably just opinion or hearsay. But uh, to me, just use a fishing reel grease. Not matter which one. All right. Now we get a solid washer. Next one up then is the round washer called a keyed washer. Now if you're doing this one with the upgraded kit, you're going to have a lot more washers. In this case, it's a three series of washers, but if you have the conversion, I believe it moves to seven because the, the newer washers are half the thickness of these, uh, the older ones. All right, that's the third one there. The thickest of all of them comes up top now. You'll notice if you, if you lay the two keyed washers out, one of them is thicker than the other. That one belongs up top. Then we have the... Uh, the cap washer goes next. That's going to go like that. And this one can be installed from the inside or the outside, so it doesn't matter too much. All right, we've got a beautiful spool. You want to get a little bit of grease onto the, the stud on the spool here. Put the spool into the carrier there. Now we move over to the side plate that uh, hasn't been worked on here. This is a fragile piece here, so you got to be careful about that. That's probably the only weakness in the whole uh, structure here is where that bearing ring uh, meets the main gear ring. This is the side plate bearing that goes in. Again, I oil the bearings, so we'll use a fishing reel oil for that. I use uh, Real X, which is an aftermarket product. I want to get the two big springs now, which are going to be the yoke springs. They go into the nested cavity. Just like that. Now we're looking for the yoke. That would be this piece. And the pinion gear. That's next. You want to get a nice coat of grease on that as well as on the eccentric piece. We're going to get our pinion gear. We're going to do the same thing with the pinion gear. Now these are these are beautiful. This has got some grease in it. I think Robert probably tried to, to start that already. We get the grease into that. Now you don't have to get it in every slot and, and uh, cavity along the way. This is going to spread. And if you put too much in, it's only going to get squeezed out. Okay, those two go centered on the springs. And you push down, and then you can get the jack to lock this in place. So I like to load the jack with the stud up. Swing that over. And that's how you set up your, your jack, yoke, and pinion gear assembly. Next up, that would be to load the, the main body of the uh, assembly in. And we're going to have to take the, the side ring off for that. There's cavity goes here, so you can't put this in with that, with that ring on. Okay, we're going to load the, the cavity in, push down, and partially rotate this so that you're holding down the pinion gear. Next up, then we want to find one of the bridge screws that's fully threaded. That'll come into the hole here. And we get our dog. Now, the dog, in this case, you can look at it. it uh, it's very possible to put this dog in upside down. And I just got a question from somebody on the 4.0. If you're ever having a question about which way the dog goes, lay it into the bridge sleeve here and make sure that it looks like it's going to hold completely. This is the 
proper orientation of that. I don't know if you can see that with my hand, but you'll see how it fits that way. Somebody had installed it upside down and it wasn't holding. Well, that makes sense. It all, all it did was kick it out, right? So always test it if you have a question about which way it goes. Next up then we have this flat spring. The flat spring is going to go on top of the dog and wrap around this post. It's not necessarily an easy thing to do, but with a little patience, you should be able to do it. So there we go. On the sidebar here, wrapped around the post, laying flat on the, the anti-reverse dog. Swing everything around. Once you do that, you want to pull down that and line up your, your screw with that bridge hole. And we were kind of lucky in this one because sometimes those drag washers will fall out. So in this case they didn't fall out. I didn't hold the case firm enough to get this started. So there we go. All right. There's partially threaded screws. Those go up top where you saw the spring before. The fully threaded screws go below. Robert did a good job of keeping all of these pieces uh, so the reel in the bag here did have all the pieces and parts, just like he said it would. And we did one of his before. We did his, his 1-0 reel. And uh, he tells me that it's just hand strength that's uh, kind of keeping him from putting these reels back together, but it certainly doesn't keep him from keeping the reels cleaned. We're just trying to get this last screw in here. I just wanted to check for the alignment on that. So if you have a reel like this, now you'll know how to, to put it back together again. The service was fairly straightforward, right? Um, if you have one that you're working on and you have questions about it, uh, leave a question in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer those for you if I know the answer. If I don't, I'll tell you I don't know the answer. And uh, if you've subscribed, hit the notification button. You'll see all of the ones it is that I'm posting. Just don't do reels in a bag, do all kinds of reels. Uh, this is a good time to, to, to roll this over, make sure it's working, it's working beautifully. This is where the cap would go next. And then we have um, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure of this one. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, schematic after I finish this video, but I believe one goes on one side and one goes on the other side of that. There's, these are tension washers. They may both go under this. Those are tension washers for the sensitivity of the star adjuster. And the other one would keep you from backing it off into the handle. But I'll, I'll come back on that one. Just take a note that it may or may not be placed properly there. All right, we're going to put a little bit of grease onto the main shaft. I did that so that the drag washers don't fall out on me as I go to complete the rest of the reassembly here. I'm going to back that off. Going to line our, our harness lugs. That should give me the alignment for the rest of the reel. And when you go for the, the side plate screws now, there's going to be two different side plate screws. There's going to be a short. You really can't see it that way. There's a short one and there's a long one. So the long ones belong in the cross, the cross posts. That was the one I was using for the handle hold. Now make sure when you're doing these that you have the right size screwdriver. You don't want to butterfly these um, slots and these screws. If you do, next time you go to repair it, it's going to be very difficult to, to take them out. You may break them off. All kinds of things will happen with it. First one's always the tough one because you got a balancing act. You're trying to clamp down on the side plate, turn the screw, and uh, manage to manage. Now I go across Across town here, if you will, northeast, southwest. I like to make sure that all of these are put in in opposing directions. The reason for that is it keeps proper tension on the side plate. If you uh, if you go in a circle, you might find yourself binding or uh, misaligning a screw or what have you. So I kind of like to, to work in different uh, directions there. Now I'm going to look for a small one because I want to go for the center of the real seat here. And the small ones, the three small ones, belong in the real seat. The 
and then we can go back and fill in the blanks. Kind of a rinse and repeat, right? Uh, get this one in, we'll go up top there. That lever's covering a hole up top for the harness lug. I don't like to go to the harness lug too early because it, you're doing a balancing act to begin with and that harness lug floats. So that tends to be a little bit of an issue in terms of getting the screw in and holding all of the pieces and parts together. Now we have enough screws here that the, the frame is tight and, and we'll be fine. Let's go grab one of these for the top piece. You can see, if you're looking in your uh, in your parts tray, which I'm using here, you'll find that uh, you will have an extra screw left over. And if you have that, that trip lever back like that, you may not be aware that uh, you, you didn't get one in that, uh, that lug there. So there you go. I haven't seen many people fishing this with those lugs uh, straps in a while, but uh, those are there to help you when you're fighting a big fish. You'll have a, uh, a strap that'll give you a third, third pivot point. All right, it's the last of the long screws, and we just have the two more to finish there. And we'll put the handle on, we'll give it a test, and we'll get it back to, to Robert. He did a beautiful job cleaning this one up. It's a nice reel all around. And I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a shelf sitter. I imagine it is. I think it's probably going to be displayed as opposed to fished. For some reason, I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting this one started here. But, you know, that's... Let's go. Cool. That's uh, something that, uh, you know, you, you, you can choose to do or not to do. that in. Right, let's go to the other side. So a special shout out to our first responders and essential personnel, those folks that are helping keep us safe during the pandemic. Really do appreciate everything it is that you do to uh, to help keep us safe on that front. Uh, whether you're in law enforcement, EMT, uh, if you're a uh, paramedic, if you're working in the hospital in the COVID wards or any ward in particular, it doesn't matter. Uh, just putting yourself out there where that uh, pandemic is happening is uh, is always a uh, a dangerous position to be in and you putting your lives at risk to help others is just something that is just truly appreciated. I don't know why I'm having trouble with this one particular post here. Let's try it this way. Take your time with these. If you're if you're having trouble, just keep keep at it. Eventually it will uh, work its way around. There we go, I think we got it now. These crossbars tend to warp, bend, and, uh, and otherwise. And uh, it's no, uh, no big deal, but you just gotta work on it. And we'll go up top here, we'll put that, uh, that handle on, we'll give it a spin, we'll see how we do. Okay, put that little tension nut there. Beautiful old uh, handle here. Beautifully conditioned reel. Robert did a great job with it. I thank him for the opportunity to go work on it. All right, we're going to grab the wrench. This is uh, the bigger handle uh, screw. This is an Allen Tanny wrench. It, uh, it's got a little bit thicker, a little bit longer than the standard pen wrench. It is made for the pen reels. You can find them, I used to be able to find them online. I'm not sure if they're still around. I assume that they are. That one's been with me quite some time now. There's other, uh, you can use the one that came with the box. There's absolutely no problem with that if you have the original wrench. There's others out there in the marketplace. Here's one that has a, uh, it's a multi-purpose. Not only does it do the, uh, the pen reels, but it does uh, Shimano's and Daiwa's as well. That one comes from uh, Mystic Parts as a as a custom tool. 
mysticparts.com. All right, you're just putting the hole down screw. We'll give it a test here. We'll see how we did. There you go. Okay, that, uh, that burning back here is very tight. So much so that I need to use a pliers. Look at that. What a gorgeous reel. Very nice, very well taken care of. That'll spin all day. Just a beautiful example of fine American engineering. The Pen 60114H. Robert, this one's ready to come back to you to go uh, be displayed or go fishing or whatever your choice is with this reel. Can't put that in this bag. That was the reel in a bag project for the 60. I hope you've enjoyed it. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.